Welcome back to Site Tech in the Mountain, SiteWorks training videos. In this video today, I wanted to show you a feature that came out in the 1.73 for SiteWorks. Came out a couple weeks ago. It's not groundbreaking in the fact that uh, it's in Kogo, and it's just a feature that allows you, as you do the point and bearing, to actually draw a line string along with your points as you actually lay stuff out. Now, where I think this might be helpful, and I wanted to do this video, is if you do a lot of your own what I call Kung Fu layout or Kogo Kung Fu. If you're gonna do a lot of your own layout and use the data collector and not like a design built in business center, this might be really helpful. But you could also think outside the box and use it for whatever might be helpful. I'm just gonna give you a good example here of a pad that just got built on a job site where there's gonna be a training site. They uh, kind of roughed in the pad. They've already got some stakes out here that were some general ideas of where they wanted to put an office trailer, kind of one of those double wide uh, office trailers that gets put together. But I wanted to show you how to use this new feature with SiteWorks. It was on my mind of how to actually build something out in the field. As long as you have general ideas of size and measurement that you wanna use, this is what we'll do. Right off the bat, I already have some general ideas of where I want it to be and ideas of measurements. But what I'm gonna do is use this edge right here to make sure it's pretty well square where I want it to be with this edge of road that's already been made right here. So in order to do that, I already know that I want the front side of it to be about 60 feet long. So what you do is go into your menu button right here and actually go down to settings and go into info bar and panel. At the top here, you got bar and panel. So for my panel, I've turned on what's called total line length and measured line length. What that's gonna do for me is if I go to my uh, roller stuck in the mud, my measure type and I do a new line, I'm gonna establish a straight line to build off, but I'm also gonna use it for exact measurements. And I know that I want this building to be about or 60 feet long, so I'm just gonna do a line string. I'm not gonna worry about naming it, and I'm gonna change it to line. And then what I'm gonna do is come over and lining up with the edge of this road, I'm actually gonna take my first shot right here, and then I'm just using this as alignment to get it straight. But I'm also going to watch that number in the top left right there. That's going to tell me how long this line is. And I've already, like I said, figured out about where I want it out there. So now all I do is you can see that, that arrow right there on the screen that actually is counting up. Once I get to 60 feet, I am going to spend just a couple seconds here, and I'm going to make sure I'm lined up where I want to be there and that my line is exactly 60 feet long so I can utilize it is I actually offset this stuff off. So there is about my 60 feet. We'll go just a hair further. So once I'm about 60 feet right there, I'm gonna come back in just a hair. So there's my 60 foot long line that I have. So I'm gonna hit menu and measure. Now what I do know is I don't have to do anything else really by shooting out in the field. What I'm gonna do is set back for a second just to use Kogo. Now, the other thing you're going to notice is right off the bat, that line is not perfectly square north. So it's going to come up to a point later on where I need to actually remember some angles. What I'm going to do is go into my menu. I'm going to go down to Kogo, and I'm going to go into Create Points, Lines, and Arcs. I know that from the edge of this row where I shot that, that I want the front of it to be about 30 feet over. So if you go into your question mark right there, you can see that there's one that says Offset Points from Line. I'm going to come in here, it says tap a line, I'm going to tap a line, and I'm going to go ahead and hit next, and then it's going to, at the top here, do point interval. I'm going to do just line nodes only, which are the two ends, and what I want to do is offset it to the left because it's down. Because I shot the line string that way, I need to shoot to the left, and I'm going to put in, so I'm going to type in minus 30 because I want it to be to the left. So minus 30 to the left creates the points out there on the corners, and I'm just gonna hit accept, and I'm gonna name them corner, because that's gonna be the corners of what I'm gonna lay out. This will all make sense here in a minute. So now that I've actually got some points, okay, that's what I'm gonna build off of. So from there, what I'm gonna do is go into my question mark here again, and on the options here, there's one over here that's point and, uh, point and bearing and distance. So what it wants me to do is pick an original point. So I'm going to just pick that for this point. It doesn't really matter where I start. And I'm going to hit accept. And where this new feature comes into play, for the original point of this video is now there's this create line from points. You could always, you always had point and bearing, but it just created points and you had to draw them in later on. 
which isn't a big deal. But what's interesting right now is you can see that I've got an angle that I don't know what it is, right? I don't know what that angle is down. If I do 90 degrees off of that, it's not going to be perfect. So what I'm going to do to get that angle is I'm going to tap my first point there and hit accept. And then I'm going to zoom down and I'm going to tap my next point, which is just going to give me what the angle is up there. That 167.22.33 is what I really needed to know the most so that I can build this off of it. So I'm going to back up one more time. I'm going to back out of that, and I'm now going to start back on this first point right here, which is where I want to build off and hit accept. So now for my angle, I'm going to put in 167.22.33, and then I'm going to tap in this next box right here and say how far back I want to go. I'm going to go 40 feet and I'm going to tap here and then I'm going to hit the create line right there. And what you're seeing right here is the reason why I needed to know that angle is because if I did 90 degrees off of that point right there, the 90 degrees would be oriented to my screen, but not square to my line over there. So if I go 40 feet, cool. Now I can hit accept and I can name that, but I'm going to tell it, do I want it to be a break line? No, I'm just going to do a feature line. Then I'll just call this a corner also. It doesn't really matter, but do that. So now I've actually got a point there. Now if I want to turn a hundred or an actual 90 degrees, there's these options up here to click these buttons and turn it which way you need it to go. So now I can actually turn it 90 degrees, but I want to go the whole length of that, which was my 60 feet. So I'm going to go 60 and I'm not worried about vertical offset and I'm going to hit accept. So now I've got a perfect 60 degrees down. Now what I can do is turn that angle back there. But here I want to change that back to 40. I hope this just makes sense and you can think outside the box for your own job site. And I hit accept again. So what I did is I basically made a perfect square all the way around there. Now I don't necessarily need to actually run back to that same point, but I can. If you hit this angle right there and then go back here and put 60 feet, accept it's going to close the line out. It even asked me, do I want to close the line out? So it's pretty cool. So now that I'm using point and bearing before this update, you just had to create points and then not a big deal. You would just go over here and hit this button right here for create boundary and you'd tie it together. But it's just kind of nice if you're someone that does a lot of this all the time, you can actually create that line string as you go. So now I've actually got something I can go stake. So now I can touch and hold on that line. I can stake that line. If I'm in random, which I am, now I can actually go and pound in where those corner points are or do offsets from the actual line. Whatever whatever works for you. You, If you need to do offsets from it, you can go back into Kogo and actually use that and create offset nodes. However you need to use the program, but just, just understanding your product, understanding how to utilize SiteWorks. It was that quick. I had an idea of what to build out here. I knew exactly how to square it up off of the road. So now it's a perfectly uh, rectangle project, meaning squared up and alignment wise to this, this edge right here. So Kogo is pretty cool. Don't be afraid to go in there. And remember, if you're curious about it, hit the little question mark in the top right here. And it tells you what each one of those uh, icons are on the left side right there. Now, the other thing is, is let's say there was a jog out on this model right here. You can use some of these other features to segment the line and break it and then go back to point and bearing and actually build in, you know, if it was a house, like a, a, no, a knob out or a chimney. The other reason I would use this is let's say I had an existing building on a project that I needed to actually run a water line or a sewer line out a little bit further, but I needed to reference the building. That point and bearing also allows you to use design lines or infill designs to offset stuff like that. So there's a lot of different ways you could use this. This is just what I wanted to use for the video to show you what that, that new feature is. But thank you for watching this from Site Tech Inner Mountain, Cyber training videos on using point in the bearing and direction and creating the line string as you make the points.